Hey guys, so I'm going to make a quick little video about something I should have done a long time ago. We just had to think about it the other day and I picked up this uh, old General Electric uh, motor, which we'll talk about here in a little bit and use it as an example for hooking this up. But it's always been a problem just finding like a test cord for stuff. But I've always used just some little cord, like an extension cord or something, just two wire, you know. So I decided to come up with this. So I took a piece of uh, 16 gauge wire, uh, depends on like what you're going to be testing with obviously and uh, this was actually a four conductor wire I did away with the red wire because there wasn't no point in it in this so the red wire is being wasted but not that big a deal so right here we got the female quarter inch disconnect which is a very common uh, connector and so I made up these sets of wires I got more here to make up too but this is just for starting um, so let me get you on the tripod and we'll show you what's going on here. So like I was saying, you know, this has got the female end and this end will just plug right into this like this. So now it converted the quarter inch disconnect to a spade. So if I got something that uses screws to hook up with, you know, I can just hook it up like that. I don't have to keep cutting and splicing or something. And if I'm working on something that's got just a bare wire sticking out no terminal I can put these in it and I have that to work with and I can just you know, splice in another wire on it for whatever we're testing throw a wire nut on it and go on I'm not constantly cutting and splicing everything so it's just going to make things a lot smoother and, and I figure eventually uh, you know, this will have to be redone, of course. The terminals will wear out. This will have to keep being stripped back until eventually I make a new one. But, it, you know, it's not like it's used every single day. But, so with the standard setup, it can be used on this motor without uh, cutting and splicing. Because this one just has the terminals like this to hook up. But, there's nowhere to hook the ground up which like grounds the frame so I can hook this up around up here to like this screw like where the cover will go and just snug it now it's grounded so that's a lot better way of uh, hooking stuff up just kind of giving a close up of how these connect As you can see it just has a, a terminal right here which is the same it just has a terminal right here which is the same as this you just can't see the whole thing so we just connect one here and the other one will connect right there this is wired up for 120 volts this motor can also be set up for 240 I'm just changing a few uh, pieces over which we'll look at here in a little bit when we talk about the motor but like this motor also you can connect it with a a bolt up here so if it didn't have them disconnect and I could just take that nut off right there and put that spade terminal underneath of it and you can make up another one with like a rain terminal if you wanted to I just went with the spade because it's more universal because you know you can put it up underneath there that plate or underneath the screw itself and either way it'll work just fine so now let's talk about the motor uh, if y'all got any questions or comments about this, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you're not interested in the motor, you can just go ahead and skip the video. It's not going to hurt my feelings any. But if you want to stick around to hear about this motor, then that's what's coming up next. <laughs> anyway, I found this one uh, for sale on the marketplace on Facebook. Uh, it was only 25 bucks. I didn't really need it for anything, but I just thought I'd grab it up. You know, and it's actually a pretty old motor. I don't know exactly what year. But the, the pulley that's on it doesn't have a set screw. It just has this uh, key that goes in the keyway. It's probably tapered and it's just like a, almost like a press fit almost. It does have the oilers for the bearings. And one on each side. This is the, like I said, this is a GE. Uh, GE model 5KC37PG670. One third horsepower, 1725 RPM. And like I said, it can be wired up for 
Like I said, like 115 and 230, which is 120 and 240. Um, you just have to change a couple things around. So there's a wiring diagram for it. Right now it's set up just like this for low voltage, which is 120. You got to change them connectors over to get it set up for 220. And this talks about the how often to oil it and what type of oil to use. I did oil it. It's not it's not locked up enough. It's also capacitor starter. You see the cover on the top. So we got it hooked up. Did you see me do a while ago? Uh, now I'm going to plug it in. I, I'm almost considering putting an inline switch on this cord. That might be handy too, but could be dangerous as well too. It's got that centrifugal switch on the starting line as you seen in the previous video on another motor. The torquey motor, I tried to hold it the other day, which I definitely do not recommend doing, and it ripped it out right out of my hands. Well, some motors don't have very much starting torque, but this one, pretty torquey. <laughs> and it's spinning this direction, so it's clockwise facing the shaft, is how you would say that. That's probably what it says on that tag, too. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments about this motor or this little setup I came up with for testing different things, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm up to suggestions for similar videos or similar ideas. Uh, let me know what y'all want to see and I'll try to do my best to show you something. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.